It's interesting that Roberts could write about the futility of that particular battle and about the general sort of waste um, that he saw around him. But they weren't pacifists. Um, they were British officers. They finished the job. I mean, that keep buggering on, which was essentially the motto for the last couple of years of the war once the, the jingoism had faded. And the, one of the things that the Wipers Times did was to raise morale, which Fred was very keen on. Yes. Yes, that's absolutely true, because um, in those days it wasn't necessarily um, considered an important thing to consider mental attitude or morale as part of the, the whole serving machine of, of, a, of a human um, uh, poor bloody infantry. Uh, basically, uh, Pops, I think, realised that. He, he, um, he managed to uh, uh, improve the morale of the troops, so at, at least they went into battle laughing, at least they, it lifted mm. their hearts a bit. That's vital in, in a, such a disgusting war as this. The next reading is the final editorial from the Better Times of December 1918, and it is read by Captain Jonathan Davis, a serving soldier of the Mercian Regiment. When this blooming war is over, oh, how happy we shall be. When we get our civvy clothes on, no more soldiering for we. The end of the war none of us will ever regret. But there will be a lot connected with the last four years that we shall miss. A lot of us can remember blue-clad mobs wandering, one cannot call it marching, down English lanes and streets, singing the above. This was in the days before khaki was obtainable, and many of us can trace those same mobs through the various stages of camp, Aldershot, BEF, and so many of them are veterans, beribboned, but still singing the same old grouse. We cannot say the majority of us took to soldiering kindly, but now that it's all over, and we shall soon have our civvy clothes on, the reversion will be tinged with many regrets. One cannot but remark on the absolute apathy with which the end was received over here. England seems to have had a jollification, but here one saw nothing but a disinterested interest in passing events. Perhaps that was because the end came without the expected crash, and the decisive battle was spread over many months and so became an indefinite action and not a show. Anyway, though some of us may be sorry it's over, there's little doubt that the linemen are not. Most of us have been cured of any little illusions we may have had about the pomp and glory of war, and know it for the vilest disaster that can befall mankind. 